Hi everyone, David here from the Wargaming Power, and today's video is going to be some of a special one. It's the first in a series of what I hope will be very popular videos and very helpful videos to you. It's kind of like a pilot almost. And this video is reacting to and helping with your behavior and training problems. So in this video, I'm going to look at people's behavior and training problems. I'll show a little clip. We'll read out what they have to say about it. Then I'm going to offer some solutions and maybe help them solve some problems. Both me and Sophie have looked at these problems and we've sort of discussed it and written some notes. So hopefully all of you will find it useful. And if it's successful, I'll do a few more and it'll become an on-running series to help you guys with all your problems. Right, so let's just get straight into it. First up, we have Claude the Cockatiel. And Claude's problem is there's a bit of an issue of basic training. The owner started with clicker training, which he's understanding, but it's been a bit difficult. He doesn't really want to eat the millet treat, and he only wants to eat from the bowl. So he ends up sitting on the bowl and not wanting to train. And he's getting very excited about it, and it sort of interrupts the training session. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you a clip of what's going on with Claude, and then I'm going to offer some solutions. Hello from Australia, guys. Um, so the problem I'm having at the moment, I'm just in basic clicker training. And my mate Claude here does not want to eat millet as as a plant. He doesn't get it. He's not a cane. Um, but he loves it when it's loose. As in, like, he doesn't recognize it when it's in the clumps, but he recognizes it when it's loose. And the only way I can do that is by giving him it in these things. So I've been training him with this, but the problem is he jumps on this scoop like and tries to like pull it off me which is not good so that's why i wanted to have the millet spray um anyway i'll show you what i mean i'm holding it up like really high and he's he's, he's done like the splits just to put his foot on it to hold it good boy yes but ideally so see how he's got his little little foot on it and he likes to do that because he's trying to me be like no you can't take it away so first up as a solution i think that offering claude the whole bowl is giving him the wrong impression of what sort of treat he's getting because if you're offering him a whole bowl of treats after he does a behavior he thinks that that whole bowl of treats is him as a um, is his as a reward so you may need to change that somehow and i'm going to offer some solutions of how to do that now it may be the case that claude sees the whole millet spray as something other than food because it's a bit intimidating especially to a little bird and it all depends on how he's weaned so what I recommend is breaking up the millet spray into small buds, taking off the small buds and then offering the small buds between your fingers. And hopefully he'll associate those small buds with treats and also it may help with your bonding because you did say it's early days with him. So break off the buds, try that out and try and remove the bowl from the training. The other things I'll suggest is maybe changing up the training location. It's possible because it's near his cage. Obviously, this may be a little bit difficult right now, but later on. Uh, change up the training location because it's near his cage. He may be associating that with his food bowl. So if you can do it maybe on top of the cage or on a training stand, that'd be awesome. The other thing I noticed in the video as well is you're holding up the target stick while you're awarding. That can be confusing as well. So if you can, put it to one side, even if it takes a little bit of time, maybe put it in your pocket and then provide the reward afterwards. But given how you're starting off with Claude, I don't see any problems in the future and I'm sure you'll be having him target trained in no time. So our next problem bird in inverted commas, I don't think it's such a thing, is Fern. And Fern is a little Konya. She's very cute. I love the video. Um, she's nine month old turquoise green sheet Konya. She's very reluctant to go into a cage. It can take even up to two hours sometimes. And this leads to a frustration level. And it's just very stressful for the owner and for Fern. So I'm going to show you a clip of that and then we're going to think of some solutions. With Fern, it's really good to see that you're using positive reinforcement. I noticed that when you're trying to get her in, you're giving her a treat and trying to encourage her. That is really a good way to go about it. 
I would, as a first sort of suggestion, I would highly suggest target training to get her in. I don't know if you already do that. It's something just essential to all bird owners. But targeting with Scampi helped an awful lot. We had the same frustration level. Obviously a slightly different situation, but he would take ages to go back into his cage. And once we target trained him, it led to a much smoother transition back into the cage. It's also worth seeing if Fern has any more reinforcing treats, anything that's even more rewarding to her. Because it's possible that a treat just isn't that high value. So maybe do a treat hierarchy with her and see if there's anything bigger that you can try. The other thing you can do is reserve a top tree, tier treat you know that she likes only for going to the cage. That means she'll only get it for going to the cage, not for training, not in her food, only for that cage, and that may help a little bit as well. I was going to say um, you should need to allow more time to get fern in, but given the description, I don't think that's gonna be valid. It may be worth making it into more of a routine and make it into a training session as well. So as I mentioned before, targeting could be useful, so you could make it into a target training session. So you can target fern all around the cage, target her in, target her out, and then just make it more of a fun training thing, rather than you're going home now and it's time to go home, because our parrots are very smart and you know what they're like. They, they're like children when it's bedtime, they don't want to go home. So if you can make it into something different, that may help you too. Next up we have Chewy, and Chewy is a very cute cockatiel. Um, Chewy has a very interesting habit of biting his owner's lip for uh, scritches, so he'll have a little nibble on the lip whenever he wants to be petted. And I think it's quite a cute habit, but obviously it does have some sort of behavioral issues and that may lead to some problems. The owners tried to um, negatively reinforce and move them elsewhere, however, it's not quite working. I wanted to mention first up that cockatiels nibbling for pets is pretty normal. It is kind of random what body part they choose to nibble. For example, Chip likes to nibble my knuckle or like bow his head and just nibble this bit if he wants pets. However, you know, it can be all over. So it's perfectly normal. However, obviously on lips, it may not be ideal. It may be a little obvious, but it may be worth offering Chewy scritches elsewhere. So don't let him climb onto your chest for scritches. Move him elsewhere and then associate somewhere else with scritches and um, uh, petting positivity. Because if he's always getting scritches there, he is going to go for the sort of closest, softest bits that ask you. Because he's basically just asking you to do what he wants you to do. You could also place your hand as a barrier between Chewy and your face. For example, when he's resting on your chest, because it is quite a relaxed posture, a lot of cockatiels enjoy it, you just have your hand up here and you can encourage him to nibble your hand instead of nibbling your lips. That way he'll start associating petting with nibbling your hand and then you can just give it to him immediately. So you mentioned about negative reinforcement. Um, I'm not sure that's really appropriate in this sort of situation. What I'll do is when you're moving him elsewhere, which is still a valid way of dealing with it, you move him to a neutral area, but then as soon as you do, you ask him for a behavior, for example, a spin, a target, a shake, and then you positively reinforce. That way, he'll not link going there and getting a treat with biting your lip, but he'll link going there and getting a treat with getting a, uh, with doing a behavior and getting a reward, which will kind of maybe break the association between lip biting. Our next two birds are Sparky and Pip, who are a pair of young cockatiels. The owner's having problems with um, getting Sparky to become hand tame and making lots of progress with Pip. Um, wants to work with each bird at their own pace. The behavioural issue is that recently Sparky has taken to flying at Pip when she is on the hand or arm and chasing her away. And this is making it difficult to work on bonding. What, what the owner's concerned about is um, it leading to aggression between the two as they're generally very well bonded and any device or tips would be greatly appreciated. All right, Sparky, we're going to try. You're thinking about it, aren't you? Come on, Pep. Yes, you can do this. Just haven't quite figured out landing on the hand yet. What? Oh, what? What, darling? Ah, but you. Now some squabbling between cockatiels is perfectly normal out of any parrot in general. It's just you don't want to escalate the violence as you already mentioned, but allowing them a little bit will help establish boundaries between them. It's just having that borderline between the two behaviors. Now in the first clip you showed, it is awesome. So, so good to see that you are patient and you waited for your cockatiel to come to you for a reward. I think this was just such a good thing to see because some people rush or push it into the face. That was very good and it was perfectly done. 
it may be worth working on training and bonding with each bird separately for a little while, like for example, having them out separately, doing a training session and then getting the other one out because it can sort of help um, foster a bit of independence and also give you that leeway so you're not worrying about the dive bombing or any aggression. Following on from this, having a sort of dedicated separate stand for training for both of them may be worth doing, uh, maybe worth having, because then you can train the station to it if there is going to be a dive bombing incident and redirect any behaviours of that. It's not a, a sort of like surefire solution, but we have seen it work before. It's quite possible there's a bit of a jealousy issue here, as you can see from the video. So it may be worth trying to have them on each hand and trying to interact with them both in different ways. Also reinforcing for any calm behavior you see between the two, just to try and take the jealousy away. So they both know that when they're on you, there's no need to be jealous, there's no need to fight over the shoulders. You can even do it having them on opposite shoulders and then giving them treats whenever they're calm. If you're having difficulty seeing when they're calm, you can even use a mirror. Although again, watch out just in case they start reacting to that. The last point I wanted to make is related to hormones. Now you mentioned that they're both about a year old. This can be a time when they start getting a bit hormonal. So it may be worth practicing some hormone management. We've obviously got videos on that, but just some quick tips. Um, increasing their sleep for a set period, um, adding chamomile to their diet, adding mint, just to try and see if hormones are the issue and that is why Sparky is being so aggressive. Our next cute bird is Carlton, and Carlton's about a year and nine months old. He's a cockatiel, and he's currently in the process of learning how to play the ring toss. Awesome, do love uh, trick training. Um, you've started training him to take the discs off and getting them used to it, so great, it's nice descents, getting him used to it, and he's currently stuck on getting the discs off and not being able to put them back on. Pick it up. Good boy. Pick it up. Good. So first up, I'd like to say great work on training him to just take the discs off and getting him used to it. It's just the perfect way to start. That is very, very good. Where I'd start as he's already used to the toy, he's already associated it with positivity and treats, is by picking up the discs yourself, holding him just over the little sort of like spigot, waiting for him to touch it, then dropping it immediately and giving him a reward. Hopefully this will associate the sound with something positive and he'll start linking the fact that if the disc goes on, he gets a reward too. Once he starts associating the disc dropping with a reward, the next thing you need to do is place the disc next to the, um, the toy and then getting him to just put it anywhere near it. So putting it next to the uh, stick, putting it on the stick, anything, any attempt to get to a reward. And again, this is sort of like a next way of getting him to associate it with positivity and sort of training the tricks in little bits. Finally, what you want to do, now he's sort of like starting to link it with taking it off, putting it on, getting it anywhere near is trying to finish off the trick. So that means you only reward for attempts to actually put it onto the stick. So he gets it, he picks it up, puts it on the stick, even if it falls off, it's worth a reward and just keep working on that. The last submission is Cinnamon, who's a lovely little cockatiel. She's only seven months old. And the problem with Cinnamon is she absolutely loves destroying the owner's work computer. She loves pulling off the keys and being naughty. Um, the owner's even put a little mat as a barrier. Does it stop? No, she just pulls up the mat and tries it. So is there any way to stop her from doing it and sort of cutting out this habit? First off, I'd like to say that your sort of tactic of moving her away and putting her on a place stand or a neutral location is good. I think you should just develop that a little bit further because obviously, as you said, she's flying straight back to the computer because it's more reinforcing and more fun. So take her to that play stand and then get her to do a behavior, get her to do something fun and then reward her. So the play stand becomes more of a fun place and she may stay there for a little bit longer. She probably is going to go back to the computer, just like Pickles really wants to go down to my shoulder right now. However, it may increase the duration and you can work on developing that from there. It could also be worth having a foraging opportunity near your computer. For example, you've got that place down which has a lovely base. You could put foraging material down the bottom of that. This will give her something more fun to do than she up the peas. If she has lots of treats in that foraging material, she would rather go and forage in that than chew up the peas, in theory anyway. If you can make that a fun place to be and have lots of fun treats in there, then maybe she'll stay there for longer and you can increase the duration. Some people like to provide like a dummy keyboard or dummy toy. We have like a dummy remote with little cork buttons and you can use that to kind of give her her own beast to destroy. Um, I don't know if you've got any keyboards that you can clean up and that are birds. 
I'm not sure if you can make a keyboard bird safe, but just something else that she can chew and destroy while she's on the desk, while she's near you, that may make the keyboard less reinforcing. Sadly, the keyboard's probably going to be a lot of fun because you're interacting with it, so it may take a bit of time to get her interacting with something else. The last sort of solution is two rolled into one, and that is, I know how much you like to have cinnamon out and about, it's very good that she's out and about a lot, but if it's really important work, you could pop her back in a cage for a little while, have some cage time. The other thing I'd recommend is watching to see if there's a tipping point, observing her, if there's a tipping point where she gets bored and starts playing with the keyboard, is there something at that point you could do, maybe distract her with, give her something else to do with. The other thing you could also do is targeting, so if she does start playing with the keyboard, you can pop her on her play stand and give her a bit of a training session and or potentially tire her out a little bit so she just wants to sit and rest while um, you're doing your important work. Overall this sort of problem is one of the more difficult ones to solve because if you're interacting the bird and you're doing something they're going to want to play as well but there are some things you can do like I sort of mentioned and if you keep at it it will at least reduce how much she wants to be on that keyboard and chewing it up. Right guys, that brings me to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed watching it and you found it helpful. Maybe some of these problems are something you've encountered in the past. If you submitted, thank you very much for submitting. I'm extremely, exceptionally grateful. Help me get this pilot off the ground. Um, in the future, I'll be doing more submission calls for this sort of video. So if you have any problems, do keep an eye out on my community page for that. If you have any really big problems with bird behavior, then please do get in touch with our business, Best Behaved Birds because we are happy to help and consultations are affordable and tailored and bespoke to what you need. So in the meantime guys, thanks again for watching. I hope you have an awesome day. Take care and see you later.